and started to comfort her. Immediately. The Amish went and comforted Marie's parents and also Charles's parents. Members of the Amish community made it a point to attend the gunman who killed their daughter's funeral. And Marie was even seen at one of the Amish children's funeral. Marie had sent an open letter to the entire Amish community days after the tragedy stating this, your love for our family has helped to provide the healing we so desperately needed. Gifts you've given have touched our hearts in a way that no words can describe. Your compassion has reached beyond our family, beyond our community, and changed prayerfully our world. And for this, we are sincerely thankful. The work toward forgiveness is not waiting for a period to happen before doing, but rather it is instantly. Some argue with them saying that they, are not truly, they have not truly mourned or grieved and gave forgiveness without remorse. But in reality, the Amish were living out exactly as God had done on the cross when Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. There is no remorse by those around him. There is not even a whimpering of asking for forgiveness. The Amish, for the first time, showed the world true forgiveness. A week later, the Amish men, they went in there and tore down that schoolhouse. When you go there today, there's pear trees out in an orchard with iron gates around the trees because now it is a cow pasture to make sure that the cows don't eat the pear trees. There's a tree for each victim, isn't it? Yeah. This was a constant visual reminder to everyone in the community was that schoolhouse. Not that out of sight, out of mind is the right way to work out forgiveness, but rather it is a way to remove a constant reminder of our painful time. They also gave everyone a new start. A new school was intentionally built in a different location, in a different style, to allow a new beginning to the kids and to allow the reminder to be gone from sight. And lastly, it allowed the community to avoid the gawking of those looking for the schoolhouse. This allowed the community to get back on its, get on with its life and not dwelling in the past with people coming around to memorialize this property. The Amish were, have amazed the world, bless you, with a fundamental display of God's forgiveness that has been there all along, but has been manifested in not only the Bible, but in real life. They showed us, bless you again, they showed us how to let the past to be just that, the past, and to move on with life, to not judge, but rather to unconditionally love those who have offended against us. They turned the other cheek. <coughs> Do you all remember that story? Yes. And, and it was, I, what, what, what impacted you about this Actually, story? Daphne and I, which is odd, Daphne and I discussed that not too terribly long ago. And she brought it up about how the, about how the Amish went to his families and the forgiveness part immediately but that, I don't remember the story exactly how it happened or anything just that just how they responded and even when you go there today um, you have to go off one main road um, that goes into Strasburg and then there's another main road that's down in the valley and it's corn pastures that go down uh, to this other main road and that takes you right to the heart of the Pennsylvania Rail Museum and to the Strasburg Railroad, which are about maybe four miles in. And then after that, you hit the, the proper town of Strasburg, which is west of the railroad and everything. Uh, so it's a crossroad that goes in between these two main roads, uh, one taking you to the southern edge of Strasburg and the other taking you to the center of Strasburg. And as you go down that road, I mean, it took Will and I to really actively look for uh, what was the remnants of the schoolhouse and the key location to it is always the community swim club You know just as we have over here at Laurel Island. We have a swim pool and, and up at uh, what they call it 
they got a swim pool that the community all uses. It's the same thing there. Not a lot of people had swimming pools, so you had a community pool. And you had to look right across the street to see this cow pasture with these trees, uh, one pear tree for each one of the girls set up. And then somebody had donated this wrought iron fencing of sorts that hangs over, you know, that's round the trees, maybe about three feet, so these pear trees could grow without the cows going up and, and uh, you know, basically grazing on the, the leaves of the tree and defoliating the tree. Um, so you have to hunt for it a little bit to know the factors on where it is, because otherwise you'll just drive by it. Which might be what they also wanted. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. They didn't want people going in looking at bullet holes and... Yeah, gawking. Un un <coughs> unjustly gawking. Not for the right reasons. Not for the right reasons. So, in many respects it can be good, but it can also be bad to destroy something like that. We see this a lot with the memorials that are set up throughout um, Eastern Europe that the Jews had set up and, and prisoners, former prisoners of war to concentration camps, you know, where the Germans tried to hide the evidence and now they bring it back out to show the world as a remembrance to not allow this to happen again. But there really is in many ways not a lot of discussion about forgiveness to those who had, you know, performed these atrocities during World War II. Well, they wouldn't forgive this because they, the Israelis went all over, even in recent times, and tracked them down and prosecuted them up until just recently. Tried to hold them accountable. Yeah. Tried to hold them accountable, sure. Sure, 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 sure. sure. Wrong with that. No, there isn't. They should be. They should be helping out. I, I agree. And and was Nichols, the Nichols Mine Massacre, I mean, we think about it, that would this story have been different if he hadn't taken his own life? I think it would be vastly different if he hadn't taken his own life. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes the constant reminder of this atrocity uh, can be worse. You know, here's this guy, we could be reading about him today saying, hey, listen, he's up for parole. Mm -hmm. You know, and then there's a further reminder by that family of the atrocity that this gentleman, you know, had done. So, so in this, the, the, I just wanted to bring this in, not to, to down the day, because it is a downer. But I think there's a lot to be said about forgiveness in the actions. Uh, one of my favorite books uh, that you can get on this um, is... Uh, is Amish forgiveness, and I'm trying to remember the, the author's name. Mayor, can you remember what his name? It's a it's a Mennonite. Um, he's a Mennonite writer, and in his book that he wrote, he wanted to preserve the families, the confidentiality of the families, and he wrote it Yoder. Y o d e r, Amish forgiveness by Yoder. I forget his first name. Um, he's a Mennonite, and his book is masterfully written by the happening. Ha the happening. Thank you. The happening by what's his first name? Uh, <coughs> Harvey. Harvey Yoder. Thank you. That's it. The happening. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's back here. I can have it back here for you. He writes this story in a third-person narrative as to one of the victims who was shot but lived, taking in all the facts. And it's just a heart-wrenching story. But the, the, the sign of the forgiveness doesn't just go to the point of what the Amish did for the family. It shows to us as a society, and here are girls who are victims of this heinous crime, who don't speak much English. I mean, if you've ever understood the Amish, it's very uh, German-Dutch or, or German dialect of sorts, and it's very old German uh, to that point. And, and how were they treated at the trauma center in Hershey? How they were treated at the, the trauma center at the University of Pennsylvania in uh, Philadelphia? which was the next trauma center for them to be flown to, or the children's hospital, CHOP, 
which is the Children's Hospital of Pennsylvania, which is right attached to the University of Pennsylvania's medical center. We show this forgiveness that we as a society, how we treated these people ethically, how we try to allow their religious freedom on how they believe, but at the same time sustain life for us. It's a beautiful, beautiful story. It's called The Happening, and it's written by Yoder, Harvey Yoder. Uh, get that book. It's, it's just one of the most uh, beautifully written books, I think. It's, and it, again, it's in third person. Okay, so any questions for me before we break for the day? Because we're at about time, aren't we? Yep, we're about time, 11.30. Any questions? Other than that doggy downer about the uh, Nichols mine well, tragedy. Did they ever find out a motive? Did the guy leave a note or anything? I don't think so. Just kind of went bumpers in. I think it just went off the end. Oh. And he wasn't Yamish. Amish, no, was he? it was not. It was not Amish whatsoever. He drove a truck, he was the milk guy, they all knew him, he was known through the community. And you see that in the happening, uh, she discussed how she's seen this guy so many times before, he's the milk truck driver, he's the one that picks up milk from my father's farm. You know, and he would take the milk to the local dairy and that's where you get Hershey's candy from. Yeah, that's where it comes from, that good milk from the Amish community. Okay. All right, let's close in prayer and then we'll get out of here. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessing that you have given us to learn more about those that we need to forgive. And maybe we need to learn to apologize and to ask for forgiveness for the things that we've done. So I ask you this week to send your Holy Spirit to guide us and to strengthen us so that we may be forgivers and forgive in. And we ask this all through Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, see you all next week. Thank <laughs> you.